Hello, everyone. OK, I can use the podium. I know that it is not very in line with the British tradition of roundtable discussion, but it's organized by the French consulate. So that's OK, I, I'm sure. Yeah, and um, actually, today, it means really a lot for me. And uh, just to say some personal things in around five years ago, when I was still a student at Harvard Kennedy School, and uh, we had quite a lot of discussions around the topic of Paris Agreement. And before that, we had a lot of workshops, seminars, and um, on that day, we really focused on the news. We stay tuned to the news to see whether this agreement could be really signed. And finally, wow, well, we got very relaxed because he signed. And then at that night, I still remember we had a very large beer, beer gathering in the pub to celebrate the celebration, okay, the signing of this agreement. And just time really flies, and five years later, I was not an audience, but I could just speak here and share my uh, views and opinions to celebrate this occasion. Okay, yeah, that's the uh, some personal uh, significance to this event. Okay, yeah, let's go to the topic and uh, talk about something about related to the future in uh, 30 years time, 2050. And uh, what you could say is our efficiency must increase by three times. Why? Because the energy consumption uh, worldwide will increase by 50% and carbon, uh, if we really achieve the car targets of Paris Agreement, we need to halve. So just to show you some graph here. So that's the uh, uh, forecast by IEA, International Energy Agency. Um, this, uh, 2018, just two years ago, uh, is around our global energy consumption is 600 quadrillion BTM, uh, BTU, sorry. And three, uh, th three decades later, then it will reach 900. So as you can see, we will increase our energy consumption by 50%. And one good news is what we forecast is the renewables, the uh, usage of the renewables will also double from the current moment 15% to nearly 30% uh, in 30 years time. Uh, it's just second to oil and it will surpass natural gas. So it is very good news to us. And then how about the carbon? I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this chart because it's shown in the Paris Agreement, what will be our carbon emission trajectory in the future. So if we really need to uh, comply with the Paris Agreement, then we need to follow this path, two degrees Celsius path. If we can try our best efforts, we can also reduce it to 1.5 degrees pathways. Yeah, you can see right now we are here. If 30 years later, we need to reach this point. Then we need to reduce our carbon emission by 50%. So. By simple mathematics, or oh no, I, I, it's not very rocket science. And the average energy intensity, okay, from the current moment, 150 ki uh, kilowatts per meter square per year. Nowadays, we need to reduce it by one th uh, three times to 50 kilowatts hour per meter square per year. So this is a very challenging. And what we can do so, and one very useful tool is by digitization. And right now the world is uh, going in this direction at a lightning speed. So with uh, a lot of digitization tools, but the most common ones are AI, big data, and IoT. For the AI, what we forecast in uh, two years time, then the usage will be six times more. And big data are uh, in five years times, it will be five times more. And IoT, and that's what our company, Schneider Electric, focus really a lot is we will uh, 50 percent or 35 percent of our um, uh, IoT usage will be with the uh, 5G apps. So there's a very promising for the use of digitization and it's very useful and very important for reaching the target set by the Paris Agreement. And here I'll try to relate our IoT with our ecostructure. 
Um, I will not go into very detail because it's not an IT class. And I will just tell you the framework that underpin our business model is, uh, is very easy to understand. And we try to divide it into three layers. The bottom layers, okay, is very legacy. We call it the hardware layer, is connected products. In a building, you know, like the transformers, like the switches, switch gears, and the cables, okay, they are all hardware. And we in, install the sensors onto it to what, why do we need to install sensors to measure the temperature, to measure the occurrence, voltage, humidity, and all the environmental indicators. And we try to gather data, and then we'll collect it and send it to the upper layer. It's called software. Yeah, we try to analyze the data. So there's the software in buildings like BMS, EMS, they are the software, but that's not enough. What we are doing right now, no matter in smart buildings or in living buildings, we will escalate to the upper layer is called apps, analytics, and services. And that's the digital layer. So we gather data, data is king, but king is not sufficient enough. What we need to do is try to dig out the insights from the data and how to interpret them, how to find out the energy saving opportunities, how to better use our energy. Okay, that's the layer what we are going to do. And it depends a lot on a lot of digital technologies like the AI, IoT, big data, and even uh, blockchains. Okay, so if you tell me or ask me the how the buildings are undergoing the transformation over the past, then I will try to divide it into four stages. I will show three stages on this slide. That's the first one is the legacy one. So when we were young and there's the legacy buildings, so it's just for well-being, just for sheltering, okay. Um, in terms of so, uh, software, it's just BMS, okay, very traditional BMS. And hardware, electrical, mechanical. Electrical, just what I mentioned before. Not like a mechanical, just to lift the chillers. They are very mechanical stuff. And then, okay, after 1990s to uh, uh, 10 years ago, then I would call this period modern buildings. Okay, we will talk about energy efficiencies, we'll talk about well being and resilience, and then we we'll add some digital elements into it. And for environmental environment, we we'll try to reduce our carbon emissions. Okay, yeah, so that's um, what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And then now comes to smart buildings and that's our generation, our era right now. Wow, the buildings has a lot of different functions like automations, building to building communications, try to enable remote monitoring to do space efficiency. It's really like a person. Okay, you can sense, you can think. Okay, yeah, you can talk because we've already embed the upper layer. It's not a digital layer. We depends a lot on the cloud-based analytics, IoT, 5G right now, but that's not enough. Okay, that's why we are here to talk about living buildings. Okay, in the future, in our Schneider language, it's called buildings of the future. Okay, so we will do a lot of customization, highly automated. Okay, self-sufficient means it's highly circular. It recycles the energy, the water, or the waste they used in order to put it back to the buildings. Okay, net zero or even net plus to generate more electricity than it consumes. So it's really like a person, but not just a person, an, an intelligent, a smart person, okay, who could place very high priority on sustainability and also customization. And that's what we call building of, of the future. And that's also buildings um, in uh, today's contest. Okay, yeah, that's the last slide that I have to share with you. What's the benefits of the living buildings? Okay, I will try to increase the scope from small to large. Okay, first thing is about better property management and capital planning. Okay, is for the company property management or for the buildings itself. So it's a, the, the scope is very narrow. And then better occupants experience because it's highly automated, highly customized and can make strategic decisions. Okay, so it will enhance what we feel and what we experience in the building. And as a management, a company or a property developer, of course, it can enhance your company image. Then we try to put it, enlarge it into a, oh, sorry, in the society, then of course, it's higher property value. And that's why so many private equity or investors coming into the real estate industry, yeah, to buy the properties, to improve it, to add more sustainability and smart features into it, to increase the value and then sell it. Of course, this is investment. At the same time, the value it creates to society 
is the economic multipliers. For example, they use quite a lot of technologies, so it will benefit the technology suppliers like us. And um, the um, other accessories, okay, it will benefit the society as a whole. And then try to enlarge the scope to the whole planet, more sustainable and more climate friendly. It will help us to achieve our goals, carbon emission target, okay, in 30 years, okay, to meet the targets of the Paris Agreement. Okay, that's what we are trying to do, and we need to start now. Just like in the lunch, we had a lot of discussions with the guests here. Over the past five years, we've already talked a lot, and that's time to take actions, okay? Yeah, no more talking. Yeah, take actions and try to deliver the, uh, our concepts and mentality or ideology okay, into the real world. And that's what we are going to do. Last slide here. What Schneider is doing, we provide energy and automation, digi digital solutions for efficiency and sustainability okay, to Hong Kong and to the world. And try to reply the questions of this theme. Okay, are we ready? And I would say, yeah, we are ready to do so. And thank you very much.